Thank you once again. This is Crunch Econometrics. This is the concluding video in our GACH modeling series. And here I will show you how to forecast GACH volatility. Please, it is important that you watch these videos in sequential order. Do not skip any from videos 1 to 8. I'm very sure that by the time you watch them, you will have gathered some confidence about estimating GACH models. From the literature, if you are to choose the best forecasting model, you have to choose among competing models that has the lowest SIC, the lowest root mean square error, the lowest mean absolute error, the lowest mean absolute percent error, and the model with the highest Thales inequality coefficient. So these are the steps I'll be taking to forecast the volatility of returns of the FUSI stock, test for arch effects, if present, I estimate a GACH model or several GACH models using different error specs. I select the best model using the criteria indicated in a previous video under diagnostics. From the selected model, I forecast the conditional variance and I'll be using two different approaches. I will use the initial sample, I will use the modified sample, and I will use the static forecast because not much information is obtained from the dynamic forecast. I will interpret our findings. So the first thing is to forecast the conditional volatility using the full sample as I've been doing before. So I double click on the series. I go to quick estimate equation. Here I list the variable. I come to methods. I change these squares to arch. Remember the preferred model is the one with the student t error distribution. So I change from normal to student t. I'm using the full sample. This is the first approach. So my full sample is 1st of January 1990 to December 31st 1999. Full sample. I click OK. So here we have the result using the full sample. So now we want to forecast the conditional volatility. So we click on forecast here. The forecast name is automatically generated by eView, so I will leave it the way it is. I use static forecast. Like I said, I don't get much information from dynamic forecast, so I use static forecast. My forecast sample is the entire sample. I click OK. So this is the forecast using the full sample. Next, I'm going to prepare the forecast using a modified sample, that is a reduced sample. See what I mean? I go to estimate, and from the full sample here, I'm going to reduce it to September 30th instead of December 31st. So I change the month here to September and the day to 30 because I want to forecast for the remaining three months of the year 1999. So I'm stopping my analysis at September ending. That is the idea. So I've reduced the sample here to show from 1990 January 1st to September 30th, 1999. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show the forecast for the remaining three months of 1999. So using student T, I click OK. So here we have the results. I go to forecast, again automatically generated, I have it here. So now my forecast sample, I'm going to modify this section to reflect the three months left in 1999 so which is going to be first of october i change the month now to october day one 1999 to 31st december so i want to forecast for the next three months using static forecast i click ok so this is the forecast for the remaining three months of 1999 i reduce the sample so i can make my forecast for the remaining three months of 1999 so let's look at the initial sample static forecast. What can we make out of this? We conclude here that the return on asset is stable but shows intense volatility, as you can see here. Intense volatility, turbulence throughout the course of the life of the series from 1990 to 1999. So you can also predict that volatility may occur in year 2000 from what you can see here. So this is the forecast of the variance, though it shows that the return on the assets 
will be stable over time. How about, how about the modified sample? From the modified sample, look at the focus sample here. It's from October 1st to December 31st static forecast. So what can we conclude? We can see here that the return on assets is also stable and volatility slows towards the end of the year. At the beginning of the month, October, November, we can see intense volatility, but by early December, we can see a downward spiral, that is some calmness beginning to restore in the series. But who knows, there may be a spiral hike in year 2000. So this is just to show you that you can reduce your sample and make a forecast with what is left of your sample in the data. Some of you may be wondering why are you not forecasting for year 2000? You don't have the data for year 2000, so you can only speculate using some um, geometric or econometric specification. So I have this paper from Wenstrom 2014, and it shows how you can specify a forecast equation for a GACH model. So if you're interested in knowing how to specify a forecast model for a GACH 1-1, I will encourage you to look for this paper. I'll put the name in the video description so that you can look for it on the web and read up. So this is how you can specify a forecast model for a GACH 1-1. In conclusion, I will say that the need for modeling and forecasting volatility is because investors are not only interested in the average return of a stock, but they also want to know how risky it is to hold such a stock. Market investors and speculators need information to analyze the gains or losses from the erratic behavior of financial assets. They want to know are there gains to be made or losses to be incurred. Analyzing volatility is helpful because it informs investors a measure of the risk involved when holding an asset. These are some of the papers and resources are used in developing the GACH modeling series. Kindly avail yourself of them. I will always emphasize that video tutorials are insufficient. Please, you have to read. These papers are very simple and interesting. Even if it's one paper, please read up. It will solidify your understanding with the practical hands-on tutorial that you have experienced on my channel. So the forecast ad volatility video concludes our GACH modeling series. I have nine videos in this collection. I will encourage you to please watch them all. Take notes. If I'm too fast, you can pause your video, play back again, so that you can actually understand what I just said. I'm grateful for all of you, for all your comments and suggestions. I'll be right back with more interesting videos.